had a terrible day. <laughs> well, good evening to all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Well, tonight we have a speaker who is virtually local. This lady here from Dissert. From Pistachi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight the topic is Gretchen, the last princess, Welsh princess, and the lost children. Now that's very, very interesting, isn't it? We haven't got mm -hmm. to about that. I haven't. But I know that somebody who has heard this talk and extremely good talk it is. So I would like you to give a typical history welcome to Mrs. Glentwell Mena Griffin. <laughs> Before I start, give you um, a family, 20 years family tree, but I don't want you to study it. Halfway through the talk, I will be dealing with it. the last Welsh princess and the lost children. Now it's said that the past shapes us and that to forget it is to lose our identity. The story of Gwenllian was almost lost. Now her story is set in the 13th century and I need to tell you a bit about her background so that you would better appreciate what happened to her. So on the one hand in the 13th century we have three English kings and on the other we have three Welsh princes. The three English kings are King John I, his son Henry III, and his son Edward I. Nothing to do with that family tree that I've given you. No need to look for that until I have So three, King John I, you all know him, Magna Carta fame. His son Henry III, not taught in school, but you will remember him because he's the fourth longest reigning monarch. The longest reigning monarch is our present queen. The second longest reigning monarch is Victoria. The third is George III, who lost the war for American independence. And then Henry III, who, um, who reigned for about 56 years. And then Edward I, Henry's son, you know him because he's the one who built the Ring of Castles in North Wales to keep the Welsh in check and to control them. <laughs> now on the other side, we have three Welsh kings, three Welsh princes, I should say. We used to have kings in Wales, but the last one was uh, killed by, Hen by Harold. You know the arrow in the eye? <coughs> 1066? Well, just before that, the last Welsh king was killed and they were not allowed to call themselves kings after that. So we're dealing with three princes. Llewellyn the Great, his son Griffith, and his son Llewellyn the Last, who was the father of Gwenllian. Llewellyn the Great is the one who united the greater part of Wales, and Llewellyn the Last, as I said, father of Gwenllian. And I'm dressed like this because these are the colours of the royal house of Gwynedd, red and gold. All through the century, these six characters clashed and warred and made peace and clashed and warred and made peace, and they even intermarried. <laughs> the first pair, John I and Llewellyn the Great, 
John gave the hand of his daughter in marriage to Llewellyn the Great. Now, uh, the daughter was an illegitimate daughter, but a daughter nevertheless called Joan. She, her mother was a French woman, so she was brought up in France, and at the age of 15, she was brought from France <coughs> to Chester for the wedding, and she became a valuable intermediary between Llewellyn and King John, because their relationship was very strained. The, th the third pair, uh, Edward the First and <coughs> Llewellyn the Last, Llewellyn the Last was given the hand of Eleanor de Montfort in marriage, the cousin of Edward the First. And they were married in a glittering ceremony in Worcester Cathedral, where a commemorative window can still be seen. If you go there, you'll see the window, and it says underneath Llewellyn, Prince of Wales, or Llewellyn of Wales. Now, Eleanor, uh, his wife, they had been married by proxy, first of all. He muttered a few words here. She, she was also in France. She muttered a few words in France, and they were married by proxy. And then she was, when she was sailing over across the channel to meet her husband, she was intercepted by a ship sent by Edward I, who then imprisoned her for two or three years in the house until Llewellyn made certain concessions, until he gave up some land. And then eventually she was allowed to actually marry him in Worcester Cathedral. But it seems to have been a love match because Llewellyn had no illegitimate children, which was a rare event in those days, and he was well into middle age by then. Now, Llewellyn and Eleanor had a daughter <coughs> named Gwenthia. She was born in Llewellyn's court at Abergwyn Gregin, near Bangor, on the 12th of June, 1282. She was the heiress of the Princes of Gwynedd and was the first and only child of Llewellyn and Eleanor because Eleanor died in childhood and was buried in Thanwise Church, straight across the straits from Aberdeen Gregor. King Edward was determined to subdue the Welsh, and when Gwenthia was about five months old, in November 1282, he sent the Archbishop of Canterbury to Aberdeen Gregor, from the south of England up to the north of Wales, to Aberdeen Gregor for three days to offer Llewellyn peace terms. But they were burdensome. In exchange for giving up all his lands and all his titles, Llewellyn would be granted an earldom in England. He refused. Within a month, he was dead. Edward had hatched a plot which succeeded in luring Llewellyn to South Wales, where he was ambushed and killed near Bill. He was beheaded. His body was buried at Cumhir Abbey near Llandrindod Wells. He was beheaded because in those days they didn't have cameras to take a picture to say, this is, I killed this person. They beheaded him and they brought the, the head back to Edward I, who was at that time residing here in Fridland. So that was December 1282. Edward I was here and the head of Llewellyn the last was brought here on the way to the Tower of London. Now one piece of evidence which proves that Edward visited Shrivelan is an item of his expenses in 1281 when the royal fishermen were based at the Vorid and the extract reads to wild boar the fisherman receiving 10p per day and his companions the Queen's fishermen at 3p per day, fishing in the sea 42 days, £4.18. shillings. I don't know why the Queen's fishermen had 3p a day, and the, the Kings had 10p a day, but it proves he was here. Now the soldier who killed Llewellyn didn't realise whom he had killed at first, and it was later that they found out who it was, and the, he was a Robert Brodie of Shropshire, and he was granted a knighthood and lands by King Edward for 
getting rid of Llewellyn the last for him. When Fia now was about six months old, and she was an orphan. Her mother had died in childbirth, her father had been ambushed and killed. And Edward took action immediately in order to ensure that the Welsh had no one around whom they could rally and continue the struggle against him. And he acted ruthlessly. After spending the one and only Christmas at home, when Fiel was kidnapped and taken to the coast from Aberdeen Bregin to the coast, which was only a short distance away, where a ship was waiting. For the sea, you see, was within easy reach. Travelling overland would have been dangerous. They could have been ambushed far more easily and the baby could have been freed. So they went by ship. The boat sailed down the west coast along the English Channel and up the east coast to Grimsby, from where Gwenllian was transported <coughs> to Sempringham in North Lincolnshire and placed in a nunnery. Now if you can imagine a map of Britain, <coughs> Grimsby is about on a level with Manchester. <coughs> so they've gone down a long channel. And the nunnery was about 70 miles inland in a southwesterly direction. Market reason is about 35 miles inland on that same trajectory. And Sempringham was a major house that accommodated 200 nuns. Edward paid a sum of 20 pounds annually for her keep. He even wrote to the Pope for financial help at one time saying, here held prisoner is the Princess of Wales whom we have to maintain. He wrote a letter to the prior of Sempringham saying, having the Lord before my eyes, pitying also her sex and her age, that the innocent may not seem to atone for the iniquity and ill-doing of the wicked. And that seems to explain why her life was spared. Why was she sent to Sempringham? Well, it was very far from Wales in those days, being on the edge of the vast area of the Fens. The abbot was a highly respected Englishman who would take care of the dangerous Welsh princess. And the Gilbertine order in that priory ensured that the nuns lived behind very high walls. And it was a very strict order. You normally um, imagine monks and nuns singing. No singing was allowed in this particular order. As the years passed, and the old king and the old supervisor died, and were replaced with new men, when Fia was forgotten. She grew up in the nunnery and died there. The Sempringham Priory Chronicle recorded her death in this way. When Cillian, daughter of the Prince of Wales, died after 54 years of life in the order. She died without hearing her native tongue, without meeting any relation, without knowing who she really was, and without being given the chance to be a wife and a mother. No way was she to be a mother and continue the dynasty. And no one knew how to pronounce her name correctly, so that she herself spelt it wrongly. Edward's plan was successful. He was determined that she should be forgotten and she became a mere no footnote in history books. Virtually no records survive of her existence save for the noting of her death in 1337. She faded into obscurity until rescued by the Gwenllian society. She was forgotten until in 1991 a man called Byron Rogers wrote an article about her in a magazine called Cumbria. Now Byron Rogers was a journalist and is described as being an essayist, biographer and historian of the quirky of the Gotham. And when he fell into that category. His article was entitled The Lost Children. 
because of course Gwenllian was not the only child in the extended family at the time, and any one of them could act as a rallying point against Edward. Can we look at the family tree now? So you've got the wedding of great in the middle there. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling what I didn't realize so many. Llewellyn the Great at the top and the right there. Now Llewellyn had a lover called Tan Whistle on the left. She was the daughter of the Lord of Anglesey. And Llewellyn had a court in Anglesey. You can see the foundations of that court if you go to Newborough. On the outskirts of Newborough, you'll find Llys Rhosyr, which is uh, Llewellyn <coughs> the Great's court. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, St. Pagans, you all hear of St. Pagans, where they normally take buildings down mm -hmm. brick by brick and rebuild them. Well, they can't remove these particular foundations, but they've built a replica of the foundations, and they're actually building up the whole court to the walls going to be eight or ten metres high. I've been down to see it, and they're sort of just up to there at the moment. <coughs> so interesting to see if you can't go in to it yet. <coughs> now, uh, Llewellyn the Great and Tan Bristol had a son called Griffith. Griffith on the left there is Llewellyn's first son. <coughs> of course, he's illegitimate. Llewellyn the Great married Joan on the right there, who is the daughter of King John the First. And it is their son, David, who is the legitimate son. Now at Easter 1230, Llewellyn the Great and his wife Joan celebrated the engagement of their son David to Isabella, daughter of a Norman baron, William de Breos. Now he had been captured in battle and had been invited to enter Llewellyn's court. He had surrendered bills, but he was allowed to live and to uh, live in the court. And Llewellyn, remember, was often away from home fighting trying to keep his kingdom, or princedom, I should say, in one unit, trying to unite everybody. While he was away, Joan embarked on an affair. With whom? With her son's father-in-law, <coughs> William de Breos. On learning of her betrayal, Llewellyn did two things. The first thing he did was he had de Breos hanged. Now, if you go to Abergwyn Greggin on the way to Bangor, Abba Falls, you know that, you turn in to the left there, you will see a, a, a large square building which is called Antique Wood, a sort of store. And on the left is a pub, to the left of which is a conservatory called Butterfly Teas. Now, to the left of that, there's a little uh, bridge across a dip in the ground. And local tradition says, that uh, William de Breas was hanged off whatever bridge was there. The second thing he did was he imprisoned his wife Joan in the house for a year. Then he forgave her. After her death in 1237, he founded a Franciscan friary at Sandweiss in her honour. And she was buried, like Joan, in Sandweiss Church. Now, Llanweis can be seen directly across the straits from Llewellyn's court in Abergwyn Greggin. It's the ancient route from Wales to Anglesey across the Lavan Sands. And when the tide was out for about four hours, you can cross there if you're very quick, but it's dangerous because it's flat, and when the tide comes in, it comes in very fast indeed. Llanweis was a very busy port, but when Edward decided to build for Mary's castle, the port was abandoned because he shifted <coughs> all activity to Beaumaris and Llanby fell into disuse. The friary, friary itself was closed by Henry VIII and fell into ruin, so there was nothing left there to remind us of the story. Well, Llewellyn the Great died. It was David, nephew of King Henry III, because Joan and King Henry, a brother and sister, half brother and sister. And it was he, therefore, not Griffith, who inherited his father's titles in 1240. David had been the one to be created the sole heir 
the illegitimate son was ignored. Now David only lived for another six years and he and his wife had no children. But while he was alive, David felt that his elder brother Griffith, together with his eldest nephew Owain, were threats to his claim. So he captured and imprisoned them and then passed them over to his uncle, Henry III, who immediately imprisoned them in the Tower of London. Griffith tried to escape through a high window and fell to his death. And apparently the window which has been bricked up can be seen today. Owain then decided to forfeit his princely rights and he was freed and opted for a quiet life in Cheshire. But after Llewellyn is killed in 1282, Owain disappears from the Chronicles and is assumed to have been murdered. Now the youngest brother, on the right there, Hodri, he also sold his claim to the Welsh throne in exchange for an estate in England. So Owen has gone, Hodri has gone, so Wellin is dead, leaving the next David. Now that David, the third of the four brothers, had one named daughter and <coughs> two named sons. The two sons, Llewellyn and Owain, were young boys, Owain being about seven years of age. But there were threats to Edward, so he sent them to Bristol Castle, to a harrowing, lifelong imprisonment. The elder brother died when he was about 14 years of age, but the younger one survived until he was in his 50s. And he was kept short of food and clothing, King Edward compelled him to spend his nights in a timber cage bound in iron, that is in a wooden cage within an iron cage to ensure that there was no escape. Even so, Owen managed to write a letter in French to Edward saying, Owen, son of David ap Griffith, shows that whereas he is by order of the king detained in the castle of Bristol, a strong and enclosed prison, and has been since he was seven years of, old, of age for his father's trespass, he prays the king that he may go and play within the walls of the castle if he cannot have better grace from the king. All he wanted to do was leave the cell and go and play within the castle walls but in the fresh air. And this was written by a man of 30 years of age who had not seen daylight since his imprisonment as a child. The king's council must have been startled. The child had been forgotten. And this apparition from the past was not allowed to surface. The petition was ignored. The eldest daughter, Gladys, like when Fionn, was taken to Lincolnshire and placed in a nunnery in six hills near Market Raisin, another Gilbert in Priory, in a place not too far away from Gwenthian, but neither of them knew about the other. The chronicler wrote that before she came of age, uh, Gladys now, she was made a nun against her will, and Gladys died a year before Gwenthian. <coughs> Oral tradition <coughs> in the area says that Gladys was buried <coughs> at Six Hills, near Market Raisin, outside the Abbey precincts, in a grave marked by four yew trees, which apparently is a, a, a mark of royal burial. There's <coughs> a grave and four yew trees, but there's actually two yew trees up there, two yew trees down here, two yew trees over there. These are missing, but they would have made the shape of a cross. Mm -hmm. And the two missing are in the cultivated field. So all trace of those have gone, but they must have been there originally. Gladys was older than Gwenllia when she was kidnapped, and so she would have spoken the Welsh language and probably Latin and English as well. And she's still remembered in the area as our Welsh princess. I still hear people talk about the Welsh princess. No one knows the exact location of Gwenllia's grave. The historian. Dr. John Davis said that an attack of the plague prevented the nuns of St. Britain 
from rescuing her body when the convent was dissolved by Henry VIII. Following the dissolution, the abbey fell into ruin and disappeared, taking its secrets with it. The contents of the abbey library, for example, were sold as waste paper. Besides these three children, David had another six daughters, mm. all of whom were spirited away without trace and probably were placed in none of these in the It seems that there were children of the House of Scotland there as well, because Edward fought not only against the Welsh but against the Scots as well. He was called the Hammer of the Scots. Hammer of the Scots is, is inscribed on his tomb in Westminster Abbey. Mm the hammer of the Welsh as well. Remember Robert the Bruce? Mm -hmm. His sister was in the nunnery. And <coughs> after the Battle of Bannerburn that uh, Robert the Bruce won, the sister was released. And so the Welsh dynasty of the Princes of Gwynedd came to an abrupt halt. Edward succeeded in extinguishing the last remnants of Welsh independence. He stripped Gwynedd of all its royal insignia, its relics, and its regalia. And he took great delight in appropriating the royal home of the Gwynedd dynasty by setting up his own court in Aberdeen Gregory. And in 1301, Edward created his own son, Prince of Wales, a tradition that continues to this day. The story is a sad but romantic one, and efforts have been made in recent years to remember Gwenllian and her story. The Society of Princess Gwenllian was set up in 1996 in the National Eisteddfod with the intention of restoring the memory of Princess Gwenllian. And to date it's been done in the following ways. <laughs> a memorial stone of Welsh, or of um, a memorial stone with out of stone taken from Aberdeen Greg in the quarries above there <coughs> has been set up in Sempringham on the old road leading to the Priory. A memorial was raised at the summit of Slowdonia. The first idea was to place it inside the new building, but the request was refused. So the memorial plaque, the noble plaque, has been erected near the summit, outside on the rock near the summit. <coughs> a new daffodil has been propagated in her memory, named Gwenthia, and I've just been given a gift of those three Gwenthian bulbs. And they're a very, they look very pretty. And they've been, what's the word? What's the word for a plant? Cultivated. <laughs> to bloom, to bloom in June. Now we know we'll be seeing them soon, won't we? But this one blooms um, end of May to the beginning of June, so that it covers her birthday, June the 12th, and also her death, which was June the 5th. But it's depending on the, the weather at the time, they can bloom any time from the end of May onwards. Snowdonia is made up of many peaks, and one of the peaks has been renamed Gwenllian. Uh, there's a Llewellyn peak, Carnedd Llewellyn, then Carnedd David, then Carnedd Ellen, you recognise all those names. The next one is called Carnedd Icha. That's been renamed Carnedd Gwenllian. Mm -hmm. And I think the OS maps now carry both names for a while until people get used to the new name. Um, like they say, or if you climb up to it, all you would see is a stony outcrop. It's described as being little more than a bump on a ridge, rather than a separate summit in its own right. <coughs> Poems have been written to her, and I want to read one of those to you at the very end. Items for sale have been designed, like a decorated plate with a, a fancy G in the middle, uh, a piece of music for the Welsh triple harp. Do you know what the triple harp is? <coughs> you know a normal harp with a row of strings, <coughs> pedals. If you want an F sharp, then you've got to put the F pedal down for aura. You know, up for a sharp, down for a flat. 
and that would change all the Fs into F sharp. Now the triple half has every note, you know the piano has all the black notes, mm -hmm. it has all those notes. Now if you put them all in a line, <laughs> you'd never be able to reach them. So they're in three rows, mm -hmm. and you've got the black notes on the inside. So it's a different technique all together mm -hmm. to play the Welsh with triple half. Mm -hmm. And a piece of music has been uh, composed by a Welsh triple harpist for that, called Creed Avenai. Menai Music. What did you call it? Cradle. 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 Where, uh, where Gwen Sheehan was. Uh, you could have a linen shopping bag with a G motive. Greeting cards of daffodils, which I've just shown you. Postcards of the memorial stone. Bookmarks of Worcester Cathedral with the uh, glass window. Those cost about a pound. <coughs> and jewellery by Rhiannon, a little G the size of a, a pound. Uh, and each and every one of those helps to keep alive the story of Ben Kian. Mm -hmm. Now looking at this, I was going to leave this out, but seeing that, I thought, can I do <coughs> just for a moment from the story to tell you about a painting? There may be artists and quilters amongst you. <coughs> and if you received a commission, how would you depict the story of Ben Kian as a painting? And I've come across one painting which is by a person called Marjorie Hughes. It's a pale watercolour. I can't find out where it is. Nobody seems to, it must be in a private collection because I can't find out where it is. It's imaginary and symbolic. Now it shows a section of the Menai Straits. If you can imagine the Menai Straits, Bangor and the greater part of Wales is on your left, Anglesey on your right. And the mountain background on the left, on the Bangor, is Carnell Llewellyn symbolizing Gwenllian royal lineage. Along that Gwynedd side of the straits, a group of monks is leading a procession of nuns and lay sisters along the water's edge towards you, as you look at the picture. And Gwenllian will be one of those lay sisters. Some distance behind them is a building meant to be Aberwyn Gregid, and further back again is Carnarvon Castle. On the Anglesey side is Llanwise Church, where Gwenllian's mother was buried. Fluttering underneath the waves, close to the onlooker, is the Welsh dragon flag, symbolising the utter hopelessness of the situation in Wales at the time. <coughs> and on the bottom right is a wading heron, which symbolises Edward I. Edward was nicknamed Longshanks because of his very long legs. <coughs> a heron has long legs and also significantly steals the young of others. So before I read the poem to you, I hope that you, like hundreds of others, have been touched by this little cameo of history which was so nearly lost in the archives of time. So I'll read this to finish off. My kinsmen, where are you? Why do you delay while I in the loneliness of prison must stay? Or oh, when will you find me, my exile to end, and free me from solitude, my unwelcome friend? Surrounded by people, yet cast off alone, I long for the gentleness of voices I know that sang to me softly in my native tongue those precious lullabies when I was young. How long have I waited, unable to flee, not knowing which path to take to set myself free, nor knowing if you know where they hidden me <coughs> alone in the banishment of uncertainty. <coughs> my kinsmen, where are you? How long must I stay imprisoned in loneliness, awaiting the day of loves reunited, of friendships restored, that linger in memories through heartache and <laughs>
you know, I've been here three and a half years, yeah. and something has happened to where a speaker's been on that's never ever happened before. When men have picked up the bulbs, the police went across. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's in them. <laughs> are you sure they got the They're not cannabis, are they? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> are you okay? Well, they are cannabis then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Well, well, thank you very much, Mara. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. And it's uh, very kind of you to come. Now, you may stay for the rest of the evening if you wish. You certainly will. Uh, now, how much will it be? Well, one minute. Won't be like that. No, okay. Two. All right. Oh, two minutes. Okay. No, just my my uh, granddaughter. Yes. Uh, in the St. Cardiff. Her name is Gwen, uh, Non Gwen Hian. And Non was the mother of St. David. And we have a, a photograph of his, uh, of the well, where the spring comes out, Non well. And uh, Gwen Hian is her second name. And uh, we went to something and I've been on a trip there and saw this place. And the, uh, I found that these, bun uh, these bu uh, bulbs were being uh, grown in uh, Cornwall by uh, uh, two, two or three brothers who do nothing but read mm -hmm. different uh, things. And they've given this uh, name. So of course I have got Two pots of uh, uh, when she and the uh, bones planted. Where do you live? Where do you live? Three old ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, what we got, got quite a bit for you tonight, so I hope you uh, left the light on the car. It's very easy. Now, what can we tell you a few of the things that's on tonight? First of all, we've seen this tree. And I'm sure you've bought a raffle tree this tree. Because this tree has been raffling. And the tree has been... Thank you. And the tree has been decorated by the ladies of our history society. Mostly uh, Sarah, uh, Isabel, uh, Barbara. Yes? Yeah. She did all the writing. Oh, and yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. So that's going to be uh, a prize uh, for the red tickets that you have bought. And you've also been given a yellow ticket, is it, uh, Kate? Uh, yeah, the yellow. The yellow. Well, that was totally free for you. And there is eight or nine raffle prizes for that. Now, I can see Alan over there from the church is a bit upset because that's more than he has sometimes. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> so, there's that. Now, also, right, you know that we got a, a quiz as well. Now, you all had an envelope, and you've been asked not to open them until we've asked you to, okay? And also, We've got Reggie's um, artifact. He brings up every year. I don't know. I don't know what he's bought up this time. It's probably a tractor or. <laughs> but, and that would be as well. Now, also here, you will see a tapestry. Here, I'd like you to have a look at this tapestry. Right. This is not a raffle prize, by the way. In case you think it is. Now, this tapestry. When they did the library in Riverland, they were um, they had all sorts of photographs and bits of paste all around the place, and they got in touch with me and said, "We're refurbing it all, and we don't know what to do with this stuff." <coughs> so I said, "Well, I'll look after it all." Take. So when they finished the refurb, I said to them, "Do you want the stuff?" They said, "Well, we're not putting anything on the walls, so we don't want them." So I kept the photographs, the sat there, and there was also this tapestry amongst it had been hanging in variation of places and they weren't too keen on having that back either simply because the whole world had been redone and they didn't want to be screwing holes in the water. So what we decided to do or the ladies of our society decided to do is there was some very minor work I understand to be done on it because there were a few cottons here and there and Sarah very very kindly did that and we've had this framed stretched first and framed and it's going to be on permanent display in our church, St. Mary's Church at Fernand. 
don't know whether Alan knows about that yet. Do you? <laughs> uh, you know about that, Alan? It's <coughs> <coughs> under my, my radar. It's <laughs> under your radar. <laughs> I can't believe that for one minute. <laughs> Nothing gets <laughs> under your radar. So, so just so I'd like to tell you that this, that it's um, it cost a few bob to do, but we've actually donated it to the church, and they're going to be have it on permanent display there, mm -hmm. just in case you thought it would do it the next one after that. We've got this quiz, right? The, now, this is an unusual quiz, in as much as we give you the questions and the answers. Right? This is how we are. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're too soft for our own good. Right, we're giving you this. Now, the only thing is you've got to pair them up. Right, now, I mentioned this to somebody, and somebody said, well, not everybody, it's all about the you see. Not everybody's looking for as long as I have. In fact, I don't have it. Been, uh, <laughs> so, is there anybody here who's lived in Hridland less than five years? Right. Well, you people are going to be penalised for not coming here sooner. <laughs> <laughs> The, the answers, the actual answers on these things, are all, all these questions have come from our website. So if you have been very loyal, local history society members, and you've been checking our websites, you will find that all the answers would have been on there somewhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... When are we doing the food? Whenever you say when. Whenever the... Right. See, I've, I've got power now. I, 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 I can't even get this power at home. <laughs> I'll tell you when you're going to... What I'm doing is, you can open them up, have a look at them now, right, open them up, and we'll give you a ten minutes for an hour, you can have a look at them. Now, when you get them out, there's, there's something on both sides of the paper. The only part of the paper that... To do with the quiz tonight is the one that tells you we've got the name from the Like that. Not the property. Okay. The trust would just need to take hold and think it's a very kind of That one is the one for the And there will be a prize for the bottom of something for the one who gets the most. Okay. So, we can have a look at it.